So, as you know, Tucker Carlson is known for, you know, beating people up. <laughs> hey, it's, you, know, you know, people, it's always split about how people feel about Tucker Carlson and how he, you know, proceeds to, you know, do his business and how he proceeds to anchor there on Fox News. And we know he's really come, come into his own ever since they got rid of Bill O'Reilly. So a very interesting segment on Tucker Carlson took place where Michael Avignati, uh, who's a frequent guest on CNN, who's also just so happens to be uh, talk, talking about running for president in 2020 as a Democrat, and also happens to be the guy who's been on every program that he could be on except on Fox News, as he is the lawyer for Stormy Daniels. And he's gotten a lot of airtime. He's never met a microphone he didn't like. In fact, I bet if I tried, like if I got his attention, I probably could get Avin Yadi to come on the Tim Black show. He probably would come through here, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Let's let's make it so Twitter. Let's make it happen. Let's get Avin Yadi on the Tim Black show. We can ask him a few questions. Well, he went on the Tucker Carlson show, and it wasn't a love fest to say the least. Right? These guys. Like, they tried to start it off. Like, Tucker Carlson attempted to set this up as it was uh, going to be, like, a straight newscast. He's going to ask important questions. And it quickly devolved into basically each other taking swipes at one another. And it just is a free-for-all. I, 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 thought, uh, I thought I was watching a, uh, you know, rap battle between Machine Gun Kelly and Eminem. And in this case, it seemed like Tucker was um, Eminem. That's what, it, that's what it seemed like this time. You know, um, let me let me give you a little bit of background on this. Michael Avignati, as we all know, Stormy Daniels, as I just stated, his attorney. He appeared on the network in a Washington's interview with Tucker Carlson. Um, and he explains, like, he went after the interview of this, this pissing match between Tucker Carlson and himself. He then goes on CNN back to safer ground, and he comments about why he went on Tucker Carlson, because everybody's like, look, man, you know, we don't do Fox News. We just don't do it. So why did you go on Fox News? You know, Avin Yadi explained that, well, he feels that you got to mix it up. He's a fighter for the people, and sometimes you got to mix it up and go on uh, programs like Tucker Carlson. You can't be a coward and be a fighter for the people. So that's what he said. Um, that's what he told Brian Stelter. Okay, so Carson repeatedly referred to Avignati as a creepy porn lawyer. Carson plays to be respectful during the interview, but the insults appeared on screen in text. Tucker takes on creepy porn lawyer. <laughs> Avignati said he was not aware of the text while he was on the program, but found out later. Um, and he went on to comment about Tucker Carson, saying that he thought Tucker Carson was completely unprofessional. Um, and Fox did not immediately respond to requests for comment about the text used to describe Avignati. All right, so here's the thing, guys. Um, you know, it's possible that neither Avignati or Tucker Carlson deserve much respect, you know, when it comes to pretty much anything. Here, look, I'm not one of these people that cheerleads for Tucker Carlson, nor am I a big supporter of Avignati. I don't see him as a defender of women. I see him as an ambulance-chasing lawyer. I thought we didn't like like lawyers like Avignati. Right? I, I thought that's that's not what we, like, we knew. Like, we don't like Gloria Allred. We can't like Michael Avignati. You can't have it both ways. Both the people trying to capitalize off of someone else's pain, some way to extract dollars. Now we want to dress it up because he's going after Trump. See the, act, see, the whole thing is this. No matter what someone's motives are, if those motives benefit our agenda, we like it. Yeah, that's what pretty much it is, right? We like it. Even if it's people we don't respect and we've never, like, historically had respect for, defense attorneys or whatever the hell Michael Avignati is. <laughs> like, the process, like, these attorneys are going around trying to pick up paychecks all the time. That's all they do. All right, so... Or, or look, another example is all of a sudden everybody's all concerned and supporting the FBI. All because they hate Trump so much, they support the FBI. I've seen civil rights activists clamoring about supporting the FBI. When it's historically been an organization that's undermined in civil rights movements in this country. Along with the CIA. And now you're championing for the very people that, that 
Six years ago, you'd be like, hell no. Hell no. But since they're against Trump and you've been taught that you got to be against Trump, you got to resist, then you're supporting people you would never support. I, look, man, I don't think you any, most people would not give a damn about Michael Avignard if it wasn't for the fact he was tied to the Stormy Daniels case, which is putting a thumb in the eye of, of Donald Trump. And also, man, this whole thing about people being overly concerned, look, I, I've never really like took Stormy Daniels to the woodshed. Right, because I just look at her as just a person who kind of fell into an opportunistic situation where she could use it in order to catapult herself. And there's also going to be backlash for the rest of her life about this. So I'm not one of the people that want to beat up on her. But Avin Yadi, come on, this guy, it, oh, he did it out of the kindness of his heart that he's helping a, a, a consensual relationship, whether we agree with the ethics or not, or the morality or not, between Trump and Stormy Daniels. At, at, the, at, the, at its most damning, it is nothing more than a consensual relationship, though it's immoral, maybe. But she's, I, I, once I find out Stormy Daniels said that she was not forced to have sex with Donald Trump, she did so willingly, even though she wasn't attracted to him, well, then I was already done with it. And so was most of the rest of America who weren't totally, like, brain sucked out of their heads with Trump derangement syndrome. I mean, most of us pretty much concluded that if she wasn't, if she wasn't taken advantage of, what are we talking about? And somewhere you want to find this way where the money that was paid to her to be quiet, man came from his campaign, and this is how we get him. So look, just coming from a realistic standpoint, I'm not impressed by this whole case with Stormy Daniels. I've always thought it was a waste of time. Definitely not something I'm going to be focused on. And Michael Avignati, back to him. Look, it's possible. I, I think that both Tucker Carlson and Michael Avignati are, are not people that I have much respect for either way, but at least Tucker Carlson isn't, didn't just pop up yesterday because of some fortuitous lawsuit that he's generating income from and using it to raise his profile. At least Tucker Carlson's been wrong and lousy on the right or whatever he's been doing, right? Well, he's been doing it for a long time, so at least he has that going for him. I'm not a fan of either one, put it that way. If, if Michael Avignati is able to get any support within the Democratic Party, it would only show that they want to lose more badly than they want to win once again. And some people need to get their heads examined. So there we go. All right, guys.